All right, Phil, it's another top five. You've never heard this before. Let's see what you can make out of it. Top five times to bail on a bluff. All right, top five times you should bail on a bluff. Um, it's a good one, Thomas. Um, so number one, a lot of draws have missed. This is kind of a, a spot where, on average, people are expecting you to bluff. So you check call flop on uh, queen nine six with two spades, and the turn is a deuce. It goes offsuit deuce. It goes check check. Rivers an offsuit three, and you bet, or you're considering betting. Um, this is a spot where jack ten is missed, ten eight is missed, seven eight is missed, king ten is missed, flush draws have missed. I could have listed more straight draws. There are more out there. You can figure them out. Um, so many draws have missed that, you know, if you bluff with all of them, you're gonna have too many bluffs. And and actually what ends up happening usually is that people, be, because of that, people overcall the river in that spot. And so the actual thing you should do is not bluff with any of them, more or less, uh, unless you have reason to believe that that your opponent's going to fold appropriately or that they're going to adjust to you never bluffing that spot. Um, so first reason, too many draws missed. Second reason to bail on a bluff is you're up against somebody who likes to call. This is a uh, it's almost a topic for a whole video, but I'll just sum it up quickly. It's important to, like when profiling players, figure out what people love to do, like to do, hate to do, are afraid to do. Um, and you'll find some players who are afraid to make calls and lose. And you'll find some players who, are, who love to make calls uh, and who are afraid to fold the best hand. So there are some people who just call way too much. And from playing with them, for not that long, you can often tell uh, by clues such as the speed at which they call rivers, um, which kind of indicates the the difficulty of in their mind of the decision or how much they well how much they thought about not calling, um, and then the hands that they show down. So some people just call way too much, and you know if you're up against somebody who's going to call seventy five percent of the time when you bet big on the river, you just can't bluff. I don't care what theory says, what a solver says you're going to lose money bluffing. So just don't do it. Um, in, unless you're playing with this person for a long enough time and you think they're actually going to notice that you've given up on enough bluffs and they're going to actually start folding, then, then you know, occasionally bluff. But, uh, but yeah, just don't do it. Uh, number three, you are losing a lot of money at the time and or uh, have shown down a lot of bluffs. So this is, I mean, this is two, but I'm going to put them together because basically number three is people are going to perceive you to be bluffy. In live poker, like some people when they're losing, they adjust by tightening up and they actually don't bluff as much. They just wait for like good hands because they don't want to lose more. But on average, people who are losing tend to get looser. They tend to get splashier. They try to win more pots and make something happen. They try to, to, to recapture a win uh, or get even. Because that's how most players act, that's, that's what most people assume that you're doing. Uh, so in a spot where you've been losing a lot, you just have to give up on a few more bluffs, I think, because on average, people are going to assume that you're bluffing more, uh, once you're down. And the same thing is true. You know, you've been at a table for a while. You've made two big river bets over the last hour. They were both bluffs. I mean, the way people kind of should adjust is actually probably to not call you next time because most people make the right adjustment and under bluff. But actually the way people do adjust is they just are like, well, this guy bluffs a lot, so I'm going to call again. Um, so number three, if you have, number three, if you seem like you're in the mood to bluff uh, or you have the image that you're very bluffy, bail. I guess along the same lines, number four is you're up against somebody who's losing a lot of money or clearly frustrated. Actually, I'm going to generalize a little bit more. You're, you're up against somebody who is showing a disregard for the money that they're putting into the pot. So this could be because they're just super rich and they don't really care and you see them just splashing a bunch of chips into the pot all the time quickly. It could be because they've been losing a lot of money and right now they're just tilted out of their mind and they just want to put money, in, they just want to try to win a pot. Um, it, it could be for a number of reasons, but basically you've identified that your opponent is more than happy to put money in um, it's not a good time to bluff them. Um, and lastly, number five is when you don't represent anything. So it's challenging to come up with a specific example of a time when you don't represent anything. But essentially, there are some spots in poker that come up where 
you're not supposed to have a raising range or you're not supposed to have a betting range or you know the entire range that you were playing for value because of the Turner River that hit can no longer value bet. Like there are spots that come up where you know you're representing a set and then a straight and a flush come on the turn and yes you can have those straights and flushes but the way that you're supposed to play is actually to check everything including your straights and flushes because you need to protect the part of your range that are sets that that have now been devalued. Um, so there are times like that. There are a lot of times in poker where, in theory, you're just not supposed to bet anything or you're not supposed to raise anything because of the, the makeup of your range. Um, and similarly, like there are some very obscure spots that come up where like a lot of money has gone into the pot and you're very specifically repping like one hand or two hands. And then the board changes in such a way that those one or two hands don't wouldn't bet anymore. Now, now you need to stop betting because you're not representing anything. Um, obviously, this is very general advice and be aware of the spots situationally and adjust um, to them in the moment. You know, sometimes you can't represent the hands you were representing, but you actually can represent the draws that have gotten there. Then, then you can go for it. Um, but yeah, be aware of the spots where you're not representing anything because people who hand read are going to know and uh, they're going to call you down. With all of that, before I go, I want to tell you that um, through the years of my career, um, and people I've, you know, talked poker with, coached, um, 95% of, of these people, um, don't bluff enough and they look for these reasons, these five reasons to bail on a bluff and they look for others. Um, so please use caution in finding reasons to bail on your bluff because more often than not, uh, like if you're the average person. The average person uh, bails on bluffs too frequently. And uh, I, I think the key there is to be aware, um, like I talked about in the, I forget which number, but people who like to overcall, be aware of what at the poker table makes you uncomfortable, what scares you. If it's making a big bluff uh, or making a big semi bluff or whatever the case may be, know that about yourself, know that that makes you uncomfortable. You don't need to fix yourself. You don't, I mean, if you can stop, if you can make it so that it doesn't make you uncomfortable anymore, that's amazing. Most people can't do that. Um, you don't need to do that necessarily. But what you need to do is know your bias and know that when you're in a river spot and you're thinking, you know, should I bluff here or not? Oh, you know what? It seems like he's going to call me a lot here. So, so I just shouldn't know that emotionally that's the decision you want to make and your bias is going to lead you to come up with reasons to bail on that bluff. So really challenge yourself, really ask yourself if the reason's legit and probably more often than not, unless you have a really good reason to, um, just push yourself to make a few more of the bluffs that you don't really want to. Uh, and I think it's going to make your game stronger. So hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, just gave you five reasons to bail on a bluff and told you to ignore them. Uh, so, uh, good luck at the tables and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.